Tuesday, January 24th, 1961. Just got here from the West. Name's Bob Dylan. I'd like to do a few songs, can I? Manny Roth replied, sure. And so Mr. Dylan took out his guitar and sang a handful of Woody Guthrie songs, after which the crowd flipped in excitement. So who was Manny Roth, you may ask? He was the owner of the Greenwich Village nightclub, Cafe, what? located at 115 McDougal Street at the corner of Mineta Lane, just two short blocks south of Washington Square Park. Manny Roth had presided over this large, plain basement room at McDougal and Mineta during a lively and fertile period in the village's history. His daughter Jody said he loved being called the Duke of McDougal Street. It was right here at the cafe what? that young performers like Jimi Hendrix, Bruce Springsteen, Woody Allen, Lenny Bruce, Bill Cosby, and Richard Pryor got early chances to hone their talents. Folk singers, artists, poets, beatniks, and anarchists came to the club, and so did far greater numbers of tourists eager to observe those exotic breeds. The club's odd name was a shortening of the word what, intended to convey incredulity. In the following video clip, Manny's nephew, David Lee Roth, who also happens to be the lead singer of Van Halen, describes the origins of the club's name. Let's take a look. Cafe Wa was named uh, Wa after my grandmother, she's an old Russian Jewish immigrant, uh, uh, came to the United States in 1913 from Russia. She never really learned a whole lot of English. Her favorite expression was a really sarcasm dialed up to the level of stun, was wow! <laughs> I started hearing that as a kid with, Grandma, what do you think of my beetle haircut? Wow! <laughs> she controlled her whole universe with that single, uh, uh, that single syllable. He would ask you know, each individual one night, as the story goes from each easy chair to each torn, you know, raggedy couch, what should we call our new coffee place, our new collecting house? And he would get answers like, oh, you should call it the eternal spiraling nexus of the believable truth. And Manny would go, what? You should call it not really like a name. It should be like a symbol that could only be drawn, but only be drawn in the air by those who... What? <laughs> and then you begin to see the shape and the symmetry of my own personal sense of humor. Decide it. What? You, a lot of you already are looking at the computer screen going, what? Well, many of you are decidedly downtown and you're characterizing the syllable with what the f***? <laughs> Which again is very in New York. <laughs> well said, Mr. Roth. Well said. An advertisement for Cafe <laughs> featured the slogan Greenwich Village's swingingest coffee house. Here's a bonus fact for you. Before she was the Mary of Peter, Paul, and Mary, Mary Travers was a waitress there. Manny Roth abandoned the nightclub in the late 1960s, transferring ownership to Menachem Dvorman, who renamed it the Café Fin John and transformed it into a Middle Eastern restaurant. Then, in the 1980s, a new owner got the restaurant, started the club up again, changed the name back to Café, and it continues to operate to this day. Manuel Lee Roth was born in Indiana in 1919. He majored in theater and business at the University of Miami before dropping out to enlist in the army in World War II. He became a navigator on bombing missions over Germany and earned the Distinguished Flying Cross among other medals. After the war, he finished his studies in Miami and studied acting in New York. In 1959, someone told Mr. Roth about a garage that used to be an old horse stable on MacDougall between Bleecker and West 3rd Streets. You had to go down steep stairs to reach the dark, dank basement which was bisected by a trough once used as a gutter for horse <laughs> Mr. Roth immediately recognized it as an excellent site for a coffee house. <laughs> exactly how someone makes that leap from horse <laughs> to coffee house is completely beyond me but I am nowhere near qualified to comment on the subject. Either way, Mr. Roth immediately recognized it as an excellent site for that legendary genre of cafe, where, at least in the haziness of memory, hipsters smoked, sipped espresso, and discussed Sartre. Manny Roth spent his last $100 on a truckload of broken marble to make the floor, which he laid himself. According to current manager Hap Pardo, after Manny Roth sold the club in 1968, he'd always call in and check about the marble floor, asking if it was still there. 
he sprayed the walls with black paint to create the feeling of a cave. There were cast-off chairs and candles in blue glass flickering on every table. Full occupancy at the time was 325. Manny Roth kept a tight lid on expenses. Folk singer Dave Van Rock once said, by the time he got finished with a penny, you could no longer see the Lincoln on it. Upon the recommendation of folk singer Richie Havens, Manny Roth hired Jimi Hendrix, who in the mid-1960s called himself Jimmy James as the frontman for a group called the Blue Flames. The Flames played five sets a night, sometimes six nights a week, right here at Cafe for little more than tips. It's an old legend that when the Blue Flames were on stage, Jimmy's guitar solos could be heard all the way from Washington Square Park, even with the front door closed. There were, of course, small problems, like the time in 1961 when the police filed charges against Mr. Roth for allowing an unleashed French poodle to roam the club. It turned out to belong to a waitress and the charges were dropped. Like other village clubs, Café was occasionally fined for selling food and providing entertainment without a cabaret license. After Mr. Dillon was late for performances three times in a row, Mr. Roth fired him. In 2012, David Lee Roth, Manny's nephew, came back to play at Cafe, what? which he had loved to visit as a seven-year-old, with Van Halen. According to him, it looked pretty much the same as he remembered it. He told the crowd, this is a temple. This is a very special place and I am more nervous about this gig than I would ever be at the garden. There is no hiding up here. There are no fake vocals. There is no fake anything. Thanks for watching. Oh, and if you're thinking that I specifically chose the cafe what? for my project just so that I could take advantage of all those YouTube clips and expressions, you're right.